Lil Yachty started off his career on a dreadful note. His very first interview made hip-hop fans hate him for a few reasons. The first reason was this terrible freestyle. If I was on this beat, it would be spinning vinyl. They mad cause a nigga just went viral. They mad cause it, you can't do that, you can't do that. You can't hide me up like that, cause then I have to, the next bar has to be better. Like, Not a kid really selling. Uh, in high school, I never was failing. I think, I think, I think that's why they mad at me. They mad cause they trying to grab at me. They mad, stop. Oh, my fault. My, I, I got hype. You can't do that, right, though. All right, one more. Young nigga from the west side of town. Got a shit. I'm, I'm trying to think what to do. I don't know. I'm not a rapper. He should have pre-wrote some lyrics to avoid the embarrassment. Then he followed that up by admitting he's not a rapper, which people thought was just an excuse for the bad bars. But the worst part of the entire interview was at the very end. And the reason they're so mad is because they think that the young kids don't take this hip-hop thing serious. I honestly don't. <laughs> he honestly doesn't. And he does He's it. called having fun. I'm sorry. You're just having fun, right? Yeah. That's it. And getting money. That's it. It's yeah. all money getting yeah, fun. It's just, it's just, we're just chilling. Lil Yachty straight up saying he doesn't take hip hop seriously and that it's just for money left a bad taste in the mouths of traditional rap fans. This was Yachty's grand introduction to mainstream hip hop. Most people thought he was just another mumble rapper, someone who will be here and gone within a couple of years. What they didn't know is that Yachty was on a path of domination. Behind his nonchalant attitude was an extremely hard working and talented artist. Today, hip hop is in a dry, repetitive, and predictable spot, yet everything Yachty touches turns to gold. Today, we are going to look at how Yachty was hated and disregarded, then every single thing he did to build back his reputation to become the secret weapon the music industry depends on today. It's important to consider this first interview took place on Hot 97. For decades, this radio station was an opportunity for rappers to broadcast their talents, their art to millions of New Yorkers, which was the birthplace of hip hop. So his attitude wasn't just disrespectful to Hot 97, but hip hop as a whole. Hip hop fans ravaged Yachty online. They felt he didn't deserve to be on Hot 97 and he was a disgrace to the culture. But it wasn't just Yachty. All melodic trap artists face resistance. Future, Migos, Young Thug, Lil Uzi Vert were just some of the few that traditional hip hip-hop fans thought were ruining the sound by simplifying it too much. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Migos, but all them niggas sound the same. To make them even more mad, Yachty was added to the XXL freshman list just a few months later, which is another huge stamp of approval from the music industry. The 2016 XXL freshman cipher is an iconic piece of rap history that marks a distinct shift in not just the music, but the attitudes of mainstream rappers. Lil Uzi, 21 Savage, and Kodak Black borderline mocked the legacy of XXL as they laughed and joked through their freestyles. And although Yachty was laughing with them, he actually took his freestyle more seriously. Wasn't no fool for rice. All of these bitches, they want me, but they get one night. F I give a f what you saying. Bitch nigga, no, I ain't playing. It seemed like Yachty didn't want to get bullied online by rap fans again. It felt like he was trying to prove himself as a rapper. Turns out, that was exactly right. Two weeks after the freshman cypher, Yachty dropped a song called For Hot 97, along with his Summer Songs 2 mixtape. This track wasn't a diss, but Ebro at Hot 97 took it that way when he tweeted the song. Lil Yachty and his team with these high school ass bars, followed by an Instagram caption that read, another Lil rapper caught feelings. Then Yachty responded, I didn't catch feelings, it was just to show that I can rap. It wasn't a diss to you, good sir, it was simply more like a check this. Actually, f hot 97. I'm not finna try to explain myself to no one dissing me. But it didn't stop there. Yachty called Ebro on Hot 97 Live and tried to explain. I didn't catch no feeling. It was to show what's good. And nigga, you, nigga, that shit is hard, bro. I, I don't care if you 69, bro. Like, 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 Yo, f that, man. That. These high school ass rappers, I'ma keep testing y'all. Although many people thought Ebro was being an old, sour hater, it seemed like they were able to laugh and have mutual respect for each other. But fans were not as quick to forgive Yachty, especially because during his Pitchfork interview, he said something that would haunt him for the rest of his career. But first, I recently found out I'm being charged every month for subscription service I don't even use. Luckily, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is an all in one finance platform that helps you save more money and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. I'm using Rocket Money to cancel those subscriptions I forgot about and just don't use anymore. Rocket Money identifies reoccurring charges and cancels them for you with just one tap. Your credit score is important. Rocket Money will notify you of changes that impact your score and will offer you insights on how to improve it. Rocket Money can also help you grow your net worth by giving you a clear picture of all your assets in one place including your cash, debts, investments, 
investments, crypto, and retirement funds. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. And I've got the hookup. Go to rocketmoney.com slash patrickcc or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash patrickcc to get started for free. Lil Yachty said that the notorious B.I.G., one of the greatest rappers of all time, is overrated. He later doubled down and admitted he can't name five Tupac or Biggie songs. His brutally honest opinion about two rap legends made headlines across countless news outlets, continuing the same narrative that he is a disgrace to hip-hop and should not be celebrated by the culture. But he didn't need their support, because at this time his song Broccoli peaked at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as his viral 2015 hit One Night slowly crept up to number 49 on Billboard. His debut mixtape Lil Bo as well as Summer Songs 2 were cult classics. His music at the time can be described as carefree bubblegum rap with a heavy reliance on autotune, but others just called it mumble rap, thanks to Wiz Khalifa. We call it mumble rap. Oh, so y'all got a name for it? Yeah, me and my homies. I mean, it ain't no disrespect to the little homies, but like, they know what's up. They say they don't want to rap, you know what I mean? But it's, it's cool for now. It's going to evolve, and I feel like those artists, if they want to be around, they'll, they'll figure out the next thing to do, but right now, that's what's popping. Although Wiz meant no harm by this term, it became weaponized by people who hated the new sound, such as Funkmaster Flex of Hot 97, a radio DJ who would often complain on his show about the new state of hip-hop. Yachty once again felt like he needed to show these guys he could rap, so he got on Ebro's Beats 1 radio show and spit some bars. Lucy Doocy, the joke's on you, I didn't grow up the boosy. All I care about is feeding my family and getting out of that camera. Funk Master Flex, please stop talking about me. Unless you finna play my song, then don't talk about me. Again, classic hip-hop fans were not impressed. They still relentlessly called him trash in the comments. This man can't catch a break. They don't like the music he makes, but then when he switches it up, they still don't like it. This freestyle prompted Funk Flex to take another shot at Yachty. That's cool, mother Bars, nigga. You know nothing about that. You know why? Cause you a mumble rapper, Bow Wow, a mumble rapper. Lil Yachty, you don't want nothing too. At Neither all. you niggas want nothing. J. Cole dropped a song called Everyone Dies, which seemed to take shots at Yachty. Bunch of words and ain't saying shit. I hate these rappers, especially the amateur eight-week rappers. Lil whatever, just another short bus rapper. Then Yachty responded. I f with J. Cole, bro. Say whatever you want to say. Jay I mean, I don't listen you to don't Jay listen to J. Cole, but you f with J. Cole. Some people even confronted Yachty to his face, like Joe Budden. I want you to know whether you're in a 360 or not. I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life and took you from college dorm room eating f oodles and noodles. I want you who's well spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga. Chill. This moment was particularly interesting because Joe was the personification of all those hate comments and it was truly embarrassing to witness. Bayati just simply responding with chill made people realize that hating on a kid who's just doing his thing is annoying and corny because Yachty just could not stop succeeding. He dropped a song alongside Kyle called I Spy, a nursery rhyme inspired bop that peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100, then followed that up with another hit, Peekaboo, featuring Migos. His fans, who were primarily teens, loved his style. He was weird, he was fun, and he was unapologetically himself, which opened the door for three massive brand sponsorship deals with Target, becoming the lead creative designer at Nautica, and a Sprite commercial which remixed his song Cold Like Minnesota to Cold Like a Sprite Soda. And little Yachty here was paid by Sprite to write lyrics about Sprite. It was reported that Yachty made a staggering $13 million during his extremely short career. Yachty was a supervillain to classic hip-hop fans, but he truly was a sweet and kind hero to his fans. Unfortunately, his debut album would fall short of expectations. Teenage Emotions, released May 26, 2017, sold just 46,000 copies first week, peaking at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 200. When I first released my Teenage Emotions album, I thought that it was fire. Then the sales came back and I was devastated and so confused. I worked so hard. Honestly, the album was kind of bad. Little did he know, he already peaked musically. He would never have a more successful song than I Spy or Broccoli, and his music struggled to impress people outside of his fan base. His second album, Lil Boat 2, sold 64,000 copies, but likely was inflated due to the incredible list of features. Quavo, NBA Youngboy, Lil Baby, Lil Pump, Trippy Red, just to name a few. 
and again, the album was lackluster. An ongoing conversation surrounding Yachty's music career is that he is carried by features or only has success with other artists on his songs. His third album, Nothing to Prove, speaks volumes about his attitude. It sold 40,000 in the first week and peaked at number 12 on the Hot 200. Hip Hop DX said he is bringing nothing new and it may be time for him to go back to the drawing board in search of new ideas before returning with a follow-up project. Most people fell in love with Yachty's music on his first two mixtapes because it was fun, cheerful, and positive. By his third album, he was slowly transitioning to fit in with the gangster rap status quo of the music industry. Don't get me wrong, he had a few bangers along the way. NBA Youngboat, Boom, Get Dripped, but they were buried in bloated albums of inconsistency system music. To make things even worse, his day one friends were switching up on him. The sailing team was a dynamic group of producers and artists surrounding Yachty. Cody Shane, J Bands, Earl the Pearl, Big Brother Chubba, The Good Perry, Aaron Vercetti, and BU. None of them were even close to as successful as Yachty, but he says it's not his fault. The sailing team became like my brothers and sisters. Yeah. I kind of felt the need to kind of take care of them. Right. You know, but it got to the point where I was spending so much money. Yeah. Like almost a million dollars trying to like create this company out of my own money right, right. and they didn't want it for themselves. You yeah. know, like Yachty tried to put them in a position to win. He never had contracts with them, never wanted any percentage of their success, just wanted them to be the best versions of themselves. But they simply did not want it. They were lazy. Trying to worry about seven other people's careers was holding Yachty back, so they decided to split up. 2019 and 2020 marks a major shift in Yachty's career. His commercial success after this would be even less impressive, but he did not fall off. He started to observe the shifting landscape of hip-hop. He kept a bird's eye view over the entire culture and tried to figure out how he could make an impact. What you are about to see is how Yachty may not have been doing impressive sales numbers, not selling out stadiums, not winning awards, but he kept his finger on the pulse of hip-hop culture. His creativity had a massive impact on where hip-hop is today, but where he started might shock you. With the rise of artists like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, and Doja Cat, it was obvious female artists were in high demand. The City Girls were a duo from Miami buzzing with anthems like Period and Twerk. Yachty decided he would discover his inner baddie one night in the studio and write a song for the City Girls after his friend Earl the Pearl made the beat, and out came their most successful record to date, Act Up. But everything that everyone is singing and all, and I wrote the whole thing. You so you, you were in there. Like, How did I come to you? Like, you were it, just like, I just, real I just, ass bitch, give I just, a about a nigga. I just thought like them. I know what women like to hear. Like, I literally was singing, I was like, yo, what's just some raunchy shit? Act Up peaked at number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was a huge TikTok anthem that even young men couldn't resist dancing to. This track is still being played in the clubs today, but it doesn't stop there. Act Up was sampled by Megan Thee Stallion just a few months later in her song Hot Girl Summer. Earl also produced this beat and the song peaked at number 11 on the Hot 100, which was Megan's most successful song at this point. Female rappers were being encouraged to embrace their bossy, brazen nature and let it out on the song, which as we all know led to tracks like My Type, Savage, Big Energy, WAP, and it all started with the vision and lyrics written by Lil Yachty. He proved he could have a bigger impact on the culture, so it was time to have one last hurrah before he changed up for good. Lil Boat 3 was the official death of Yachty's previous music career. Now the pandemic slowed everyone's lives and careers down. Yachty achieved his lifelong dream of collaborating with Drake on the song Oprah's Bank Account, which brought that carefree Yachty energy his fans once loved. He did bring that energy throughout the Lil Boat 3 project, but it was honestly his harder rap songs like Split Whole Time, TD, Pardon Me, and West Side that stole the show. With just a mere 30,000 copies first week, Yachty himself and his fans needed a revival of his career, and that's just what they got. After LB3, a new Lil Yachty emerged. The nonchalant, goofy, and emotional teenage persona he had was behind him. The new Yachty was calm, collected, and moved like a boss. He stopped dyeing his hair, got rid of the beads in his braids. He still wore colorful attire, but it was now tasteful and sleek. He was focused, but still hungry. He started a nail paint brand called Crete, understanding that young Gen Z men painting their nails is normalized, and don't have a product marketed towards them. Concrete Boys became the name of his newfound imprint record label, and his first signee, Draft Day, an upcoming artist from Broward County, Florida. Yachty's song Coffin reflects a shift in his sound that would be celebrated and copied by many artists after him. Then hit bout it with Kodak Black, then Cortex. Yachty found his flow. He wasn't trying hard to impress the old heads and he wasn't the childish auto-crooning singer. He achieved the perfect 
perfect middle. His beats were more unique than ever, and you could tell he had a chip on his shoulder, but also couldn't care less if you f***ed with him or not. His energy was contagious. He recorded an entire album with a bunch of rappers from Detroit, Michigan just to show love and embrace the sound that was taking over underground rap. Although some were surprised, Yachty has always showed love to new artists. Just look at his history of collaborating with buzzing talent. He was on Lil Baby's first album before he blew up. He made a hit with T Grizzly, D to the A, in 2017. He even did Gucci flip-flops with Bad Baby in 2018 when nobody would champion her music. Even Drewski, the biggest comedian to come from the social media era. His first major collaboration was a skit with Lil Yachty in 2019. 19. Babyface Ray, Baby Tron, Baby Smooth are just three of the many Detroit artists bringing a fresh sound to hip hop. Their cadence is smooth yet savage, and the beats are bouncy, but they jam pack these songs with bars. Yachty teamed up with them as well as other buzzing Michigan artists on his album Michigan Boy Boat. This album only sold 15,997 copies in the first week, and fans were confused by Yachty's decision, but he said, I just wanted to show love. That's it. I just wanted to show love to all of those guys and their talent, and I feel like I rap my best on those types of beats. A rapper who doesn't care about numbers, who is able to move based on creativity and art, while constantly being on the forefront of the next wave, is dangerous. Boat had something up his sleeve. He continued to steamroll ahead with bangers like YAE Energy and rock climbing with buzzing rapper Remble. At the same time he was rapping his ass off, he dabbled in polar opposite genres with tracks like Love Music and Breathe Deeper with Tame Impala. He felt inspired by the psychedelic rock sound and announced that he will be ditching rap for his next album. It gonna be mid as hell. All his stuff be weak. Can't wait to see it flop like his last album. The negativity towards his expansion did not hold him back. He stayed low key kept his head down, and got to work. He also developed a very close relationship with the biggest rapper in the game, Drake. Drizzy posted on IG saying, More life to my fellow brother Yachty. Happy we are locked in for a lifetime. Followed by a picture of them on a jet and Yachty branding a tattoo of Drake's OVO label on his wrist. But this relationship started with Yachty being a super fan of Drake. I, for a very long time, wanted to just do anything involving music with him so like i kind of like been telling him for the last like i don't know how many years like bro how can i just like uh can i even just be in a room drake has always been at the forefront of pop culture for the past 15 years how he does this is by surrounding himself with young talent that will pioneer the next wave drake conveniently became yachty's best friend when yachty had his hands around the neck of the culture he helped executive produce drake's next album her loss alongside 21 savage yachty is credited as a producer on four songs each of which are some of the more euphoric and memorable beats on the record he is also the one who sourced the cover art some people say he is the genius behind this record and by mid 2022 Yachty was finally being appreciated for the genius he is. And just before Yachty decided to release his psychedelic album, he went viral by accident. It's important to know that there is a huge community of rap fans who actively try to hack into artists' computers and phones to leak their music. However, one hacker straight up asked Yachty for the Poland record after he heard a snippet, and this is what happened. You have this song called Poland, bro. Please, bro, send it to me. And at the time, I'm like, bro, no one gives a fuck about my leaks, right? Like, well, I'll send it to him. Like, nothing's gonna happen, so I send it to him. Well, Yachty was wrong. Once TikTok users heard his wiggly, wobbly vocal vibrato, the meme started pouring in. Rap has been in a long dry spell, so anything different was bound to get some attention. A lot of people treated the song as a joke. Others genuinely loved it. Yachty was kind of upset when it went viral because he didn't really like the song and he wanted to debut the wobbly vocal style on his psych rock album. But the fact that his throwaway songs he never wanted to release were going viral let him know that he was on top. And with that buzz, he finally released the psychedelic alternative rock album called Let's Start Here, which could easily be one of the best albums of 2023. Like his other albums, he only sold 36,000 copies the first week, but there was nothing but praise for his efforts on this album. The instrumentation was beautiful, bright, funky, and soulful, but also broke to periods of eerie trepidation. His use of heavy autotune and big room reverb felt like you were ascending towards the heavens on a trip. This will probably go down as one of the best genre transitions for a rapper in history. History. And the craziest part about it, he went right back into rapping after dropping this album and dropped banger after banger after banger. Strike, Slide, Solo Step and Creep Boy, Tesla, 
Go on TikTok and you will quickly see someone sharing one of these songs. Yachty has never been this consistent in his entire career, and he knows just how much the rap game needs him, which he expressed on his track with J. Cole. Allegedly, they figured out that I'm the secret recipe. The standards have collapsed. They wrote me in with lames. They treat me like I'm them, the hate I overcame. Refuse to pat my back, refuse to shake my hand, refuse to give me props when I'm not around, refuse to act like I ain't shift the sound like I ain't pushed the culture. These bars encapsulate everything I said in this video. They hated Yachty. They thought he was just another mumble rapper that would fall off. They didn't give him any respect and instead of tucking his tail, he worked his ass off. Now with hip hop being incredibly dry and boring, Yachty is one of the only ones bringing something fresh. Hip hop now needs Lil Yachty.